Hi friends, my name is Miss Shuttler and today we're going to be looking at a special picture book together called Pancakes for Breakfast, written and illustrated by Tommy DePaulo. The reason this book is so special is because it has no words in it. How are we supposed to read a book with no words in it? Well, we're going to be using our inferencing skills to determine what's going on in the pictures to tell the story. I picked this book because it has so many great details in it, the pictures, to help us tell what's going on in the story. Let's take a look. Pancakes for Breakfast, written and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. Now, from the cover, we can see that there is a lady with her dog and her cat and four giant stacks of pancakes. Have you ever seen pancake stacks so tall? I haven't, not in real life anyways. So based on the cover and the title of the book, I can assume and predict that the lady in the picture is gonna want pancakes for breakfast. However, we see a little dog and a cat, so I think that they're gonna have something to do with her getting her pancakes for breakfast. What do you think? Let's find out. Now that we thought about what the story is gonna be about from the picture on the cover of this book, let's dive right in. So it looks like the story is gonna start off in a little red house. There's a bunch of snow and no leaves on the trees in this picture. So we can predict that it's gonna be a snowy, cold winter day. And in the background of the picture, you can see the sun rising. So we can assume that it's morning time. So the story starts off on a cold winter morning in that little red house. Now we can see the old lady lying awake in her bed and her cat still sleeping on the bed with her dog stretching big on the carpet beside her. He looks like he just woke up too. And then the old lady is getting ready by washing her face. But we can see that she has a thought bubble. And in that thought bubble, there's a stack of pancakes. So we can predict that the old lady is thinking about pancakes. And the cat and dog are just sitting next to her waiting for her to get ready for the day. Now that the lady is all ready for her day, we can see that she is still thinking about pancakes. We know that she's still thinking about pancakes because there's still that thought bubble with pancakes in the middle of it. Since she's thinking about pancakes and she's been wanting pancakes ever since she got out of bed, we can see that she is putting on an apron and going to the bookshelf to grab a book. What book do you think she'd be getting off the shelf? Look, it's a cookbook. She's getting her cookbook out because she wants to make pancakes and she's pointing at the book because she is reading the recipe to make sure she can get all her ingredients out to make the pancakes. Now that the lady has read the recipe through, we can see in this page that she is getting her big mixing bowl out and a flour sifter and putting it on the table. She got her big bag of flour and we can, know, we can tell that it's flour because it says flour right there on the bag. And then she put the flour in the flour sifter and is now sifting all the flour into the big mixing bowl. She went over to her fridge to get some eggs and we know that she wants eggs because the bowl that she's holding in her hands says eggs, but there's none in there. Have you ever wanted to eat something and it wasn't there? How did that make you feel? I know that I'd feel sad and the look on the lady's face looks pretty 
disappointed because she doesn't have any eggs. And she needs eggs to make her pancakes. What do you think she's going to do now that she doesn't have any eggs in her bowl? Now we can see the lady with a little scarf over her head because she's walking outside, so that keeps her warm. Her doggie's following her, and she looks like she's headed to a red barn. In the little window, we can see a chicken in the barn. What do you think the, is going to be inside the barn? There's a chicken in there. What else? We can see that she walked in to a chicken barn. There's a whole bunch of nests that the chicken are in. And it looks like she is grabbing eggs that the chicken was sitting on and putting it in her basket. The lady is grabbing the eggs so she can use it to make the pancakes that she wants. Now we can see that the lady brought in the eggs from the barn because the basket that she brought the eggs in is now under the table and empty. And the bowl labeled eggs is now full of eggs and that was once empty. She put the flour and the eggs together so all her ingredients can be side by side. She added a new cup to the table. It's on the other side of the big yellow mixing bowl closest to the lady. It looks like it could be a measuring cup full of milk just a little bit. The old lady must have ran out of milk. And her milk jug in her hand, we know that's a milk jug because it's labeled milk, but in her hand it's tilted a little bit and that means it's empty because milk would be pouring out of the jug if it was full. Her face also looks super sad. She has no milk. She has not enough milk, actually. So she can't make her pancakes. What do you think she's going to do now? And look at that little dog. He's licking his lips because it looks like he wants to eat all the ingredients on the table. And the cat is licking in the milk because she wants to drink some milk, too. It looks like the lady in the next picture is taking out a bucket outside and the cat's following her. She put on her scarf again because it's cold out there. Where do you think she's going? The lady went to the barn. We know that she went to the barn because we see a cow eating some hay. And the old lady is sitting on a stool next to the cow with her hands underneath the cow. We can infer that she's milking the cow to get some milk to make her pancakes. The cat is sitting there patiently waiting because I know from prior knowledge that cats love milk. So I think the cat wants to drink all that milk that she's, the lady is getting from the cow. The lady wants she gets the milk in the bin that she has. She's walking back towards her house. And when she's back in her house, she is pouring the milk in the milk jug. And the cat is right there looking and licking her lips. She really must want that milk. Now that the lady has milk, she set it down on the table and is spooning some milk into a bowl. She's pouring the milk that she spooned into the bowl into what is called a butter churn. That is what you use to make butter with. So you pour the milk in and you put that brown stick next to it into the butter churn and you just mix, 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 and mix. You mix for a super long time. As you can see, it takes a long time because she's sitting there churning and she has a big smile on her face. And look at the time. Do you notice the time? And then in the next picture, the clock has moved so much, indicating that time, so much time has passed. And her face looks really tired. 
she looks like she's tired of turning all the butter. But now that she had milk, she needs to make butter so she can have milk and butter for her pancakes. Once she is done churning, the butter comes out of the butter churn and she puts it into a bowl. Now, all her ingredients are set on the table. She goes to the shelf and looks for her maple syrup. We know it's maple syrup because it says it right there on the jar. But her face looks sad, so she must be out of maple syrup too. The dog is under the table wanting some ingredients, I think. And the cat is looking at the ingredients. What do you think is going to happen in the story next? Do you think she's going to go get some more maple syrup? The lady leaves her house with her scarf on, her hat on, her gloves on, and with her purse. I think she's going to go out to buy some more maple syrup. She comes up to this guy who looks like he is selling maple syrup. The sign says new maple syrup for sale. So I think he's selling her maple syrup. As she is walking with her maple syrup in her hand, she has a lot of thought bubbles going on that she's thinking about. In the first thought bubble, she's putting all the ingredients in the mixing bowl. In the second thought bubble, she's mixing all the ingredients together. In the third thought bubble, she's putting the pancake batter in the skillet on the stove. And then in the fourth thought bubble, she's flipping the pancakes to cook on both sides. And in the fifth thought bubble, she has a big stack of pancakes that she's ready to dive in and eat. So we can infer that she is thinking about all of this on her walk back home from getting maple syrup. The old lady walked through her front door and is just standing there with her arms raised at her sides and her hands are open. Her eyes and mouth are also wide open. The maple syrup is falling on the ground and all the ingredients that were on the table are now on the floor. And the cat is licking up the milk off the table and the dog has an eggshell in his mouth. From this, we can infer that the old lady walked in her house to all the ingredients spilled on the floor and the table from the dog and the cat. She was shocked that all her ingredients were everywhere that she spilled her new maple syrup and realized she couldn't make pancakes anymore. What do you think the late old lady is going to do now that all her ingredients to make the pancakes she has wanted all morning can't be used to make pancakes anymore? The old lady took off her hat and her scarf and is standing there with a sad look on her face and the thought bubble has the pancakes flying away. This means that she is sad that she can't make the pancakes anymore. But do you see those lines coming through the door and across her face? That means she smells something. She hurries and puts on her scarf and her hat again and walks to where the smell is coming from. And it looks like it's her neighbor's house. The smell led her right to her neighbor's kitchen, where they are making something that smells really good. She waves to them at the front door and walks in and sits at their table. There's a big stack of pancakes on the table, and that's what she was smelling of so good. Her neighbors are standing next to her, confused as to what she's doing. But she has been wanting pancakes all morning long, and nothing is going to stop her from eating them. After eating pancakes at her neighbor's house, her, her dog, and her cat all have super full bellies. And they're very tired. They're, all their eyes are closed. They had a very long morning trying to make pancakes. And she has a sign on her wall that says, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And we know she follows this because she finally got her pancakes. You all did such an amazing job using your inferencing skills and even your predicting skills. Now that we've gone through the whole book together, I want you to go back through every single picture that was in the book and create your own version of the story, as if you were the author writing a story for just all the pictures that are drawn. I made an example to share with you. So I did the one for the very first page of the book. 
And I put, it all started one morning on a little red house on a cold, snowy winter morning. Now it's your turn to go back through all the pictures and create your own story. Thank you so much for doing these activities, and I hope you had so much fun. I know I did. I hope to see you all again really soon.